to the last in our series, Challenge Accepted. I hope you guys are ready for our last challenge. Before we get to our lesson, let's just go over a couple of announcements. First, Monday nights at seven o'clock, we have our Zoom. It's for kids in first through fifth grade, and it's a big discipleship group that then breaks out into small groups with small groups leader, small group leaders that talk about our lesson from Sunday and how that applies to you. We would really love for you to be a part of that. You just have to log in and join us. There's been so many friendly faces. I've been amazed at how many kids are getting involved but we would like to see all of you. So make sure you're joining us for that. If you need more information, email children at cag.org and we can get you connected with that. Also, don't forget Wednesday nights, we have our Going Deeper. Our video posts at six o'clock on Wednesday nights and it's a time of, it's a video that just helps you um, learn how to take the lesson a little bit deeper, more deeper in the word and just um, really studying how the lesson is so uh, valuable to us. So make sure you're um, joining that and you can get all of our videos when you subscribe to the channel. You know, when you subscribe, you automatically get notifications of when we post videos. So that would be a great way for you guys to um, just know that our videos are out there. So let's pray before we get to our lesson and worship, okay? So pray with me. Father, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to dive into your word today, God. Lord, we pray that you we are truly challenged and that you um, just help us to be open to hear so that our lives are changed today, God. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's go to worship. You're with me Whenever I 
I'm failing or falling You've got me You've got me Welcome back. So, you know, for me, football season's over. I'm done with the Super Bowl. It's in the past. I have now moved on to baseball. I know a lot of you have moved on to like, um, I don't know, most of you probably basketball or, or uh, hockey. For me, I'm getting ready for baseball season. So I'm privileged right now to be able to interview Mr. Andy. And Mr. Andy's going to talk a little bit about your journey with sports. And just tell us real quick, or not real quick. Just tell us your sport, what, what it is you played or play, and that journey. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you having me. Um, so I played all sports growing up. You know, baseball was a sport that kind of, I would say, gravitated to me. Um, but I, I remember playing football, basketball, soccer, and baseball wow. growing up. You know, back when I played, it's a little, it was a little different. It wasn't a year-round sport as it is now. <laughs> Uh, so every season was a new sport, so I made sure I yeah. was active in all sports. That's cool. um, but baseball was the one, again, that gravitated me, the one that I guess I got to high school and was like, this is it. Mm. And then that's where my journey began in baseball. So my freshman year, I played JV. Okay. Um, I was a second baseman, third baseman, shortstop. Uh, my sophomore year, I made varsity. I uh, had a really rough fall, mm. um, definitely uh, one that I... I like to tell with it my, about, especially the young people, because I really struggled. Mm. And, and within that struggle, I, uh, it kind of limited my opportunities to play or at least start in the spring. Okay. Um, but I, you know, persevered, overcame. Um, the spring came, and I continued to work hard. Uh, and halfway through the year, I became the starting second baseman. Wow. And then from that day on, I started on varsity all the way through my high school career. I uh, transitioned over to shortstop my junior year, and that's where I played my last two years. Okay. But I will just point out that, um, you know, there's definitely setbacks that you're going to endure mm. um, in the game of baseball and in the game of life. And it's how you respond to those setbacks that really um, 
push you towards your journey or will push you away from your journey based on how you respond. So after high school, you then did, you played minor league ball, right? Yep, yep. So who, tell us, who, who do you play for? Yeah. You were drafted? Drafted. So I, uh, through high school, you know, I continued to progress. Um, I ended up getting noticed playing shortstop by an Orioles scout. Uh, we were playing DeMatha that day, and the, a friend of mine who was pitching uh, ended up getting drafted in the supplemental round out of college. Uh, Brett Cecil, but they saw me play shortstop. They saw me have a good arm and short, asked if I pitched. Um, my pitching coach said yes. So when the season was done, I went to two trial camps, one at the Bay Sox Stadium, one at Camden Yards, uh, and ended up getting drafted as a pitcher. Wow. Uh, I, you know, I had a scholarship to play shortstop at George Mason, uh, but once I got drafted, you know, my dream was to play for the Orioles, and, you know, that was a no-brainer. For me to just decide and go professionally. Yeah. So I gave up all opportunities to play short to, to pursue a career as a pitcher. Wow. So now, this many years later, having you know walked through playing sports in high school and you know being drafted and playing minor league ball, what do you feel like your faith has taught you about your journey in sports? Now, well, it's a great question. Um, so I didn't have much faith at all before, you know, um, I guess before the time I was 28. So even through my journey, you know, there wasn't much faith. You know, I believed in God, but unfortunately, children, I, I beg you not to do it. Uh, don't just turn to God when you have a problem. And that's kind of what I did. You know, when I was in trouble, um, I got myself in trouble. You know, I always turn to the Lord to get me out of trouble. Mm -hmm. um, and I've realized that now that I'm stronger in my faith is... That's not what the Lord's about. You know, right. it's about having a relationship with the Lord. And I do, I do know that looking back on my life, there were times where the Lord was knocking on my door. Mm -hmm. um, and specifically, it was times where I started to fall astray and kind mm -hmm. of, you know, live more of a worldly life. Mm -hmm. um, and he was trying to reel me in, you know, through players that were on the team who were of faith and, and followed Jesus. Um, mm -hmm. But I, you know, I just wanted to do my own thing. So I didn't yeah. open that door. Um, but, you know, faith, you know, had I had it, I think it would, I would have had a dramatic out difference in, in the outcome. Yeah. Um, you know, baseball, as you all know, young people, is a, is a tough game. There's a lot of ups and downs. Um, obviously, there's a lot of good times, but we fail more than we don't. And whether you're a hitter, you're a pitcher, you're a fielder, you know, we're going to fail. Um, and it's a very roller coaster type game, mm -hmm. a lot of ups and downs. Had I had faith, during my career, those ups and downs would have been a lot easier to handle yeah. and overcome. Yeah. Um, and what I didn't learn from those was that the Lord puts us through trials to sharpen our skills, right? Mm -hmm. To to kind of prune us and, and help us to become stronger individuals. Yeah. You know, yeah. as the scripture tells us, you, you know, we're supposed to find joy in our trials because yeah. it helps build perseverance and character. So, Two things I lacked back then, perseverance and character. Um, so faith would have just allowed me to overcome the challenges, um, yeah. continue to work hard. You know, had I had faith, I would have seen what the Lord was trying to do in those situations, which would have pushed me to continue to work hard as opposed to giving up. Um, you know, I never gave up, but I never tried my hardest right. when, when I right. should have been. Yeah. Um, so faith definitely helps you ride that roller coaster um, in, in sports and in life in general. Um, and that was something I definitely lacked. And, and now that the Lord is a big part of my life, man, it, it just seems a lot smoother. You know, when, when Scripture tells us, you know, believing in Jesus, you know, will create a sense of peace. Um, I, I fully believe that. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'll definitely testify to that every day. You know, life has been peaceful. Um, but ultimately, you know, you go to bed at night, you know, young kids, you know, with, with faith in Jesus, knowing that tomorrow is a new opportunity and that he is making a way for you. He does have a path for you. You just got to do your part and endure it. Yeah. I don't think I could have said it any better today. So, Andy, you have said some very powerful things that I hope our kids, kids, if you are listening to this, please go back and watch it again. And really listen to what Andy's saying because he's giving you some great wisdom in just how to keep um, pursuing Jesus 
and the path that he has for you. Thank you so much for being with us. I so appreciate it more than you know. And we look forward to the next part of our journey. Welcome back guys. And welcome to the last week of our series, Challenge Accepted. I cannot believe that it's the last week. Me either, it's been such a fun one. It really has. We've learned that no matter what challenges that we face, Jesus takes care of us, shows us the truth, and helps us when we're tempted. Those are all big challenges that everyone faces. I'm just so glad Jesus is there to help us. You bet he is. And that goes with our big idea for today. Jesus understands my challenges. Do you mean the Son of God, the light of the world, the Lion of Judas, the Savior understands the challenges we go through? He understands our struggles? Yes, he does. He understands the small struggles that we go through, like with homework, and the big struggles that we go through, like when understanding who God is. I love that Jesus is awesome like that. Me too. Now, are you ready to accept a challenge? I'm always ready to accept a challenge. You know how competitive I am. Of course I do. But this is going to be a really big challenge for you. We each Ooh. have three tries to get this ball into this basket. Okay. Are you ready? Gotta yeah. dunk it. It's a dunk challenge. Wait, the basket's gonna be up there? The basket's gonna be up here. It's a dunk challenge. Mm, I mean, it doesn't seem fair, but I'm up for the challenge. Let's go. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. It's really high. It is really high. Oh! Hey, you got the first one. Yes. You got the first one. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. You almost did. It was really close. Okay. Okay. You got this one. You got it. You got this one. I believe in you. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Does it count? I guess it counts. It was in the basket. Like, it was in the basket. I mean, it wasn't that fair because, you know, my height difference. But I guess life isn't really that fair. But it's good to know that not only that Jesus knows the hard stuff, but he understands. And you just did really great because you kept trying and you didn't give up. So now we're going to go to our Bible story where we're going to learn about how Jesus was tempted and faced very hard challenges. We hereby Don't call this meeting name. of the Justice League to Ooh, order. Justice League. I know. <laughs> no, I thought it was. Oh, no, there, it's I a joker. It ah. Ah. He's, he's the ah. bunny we're fighting. We're going to fight him because he's trying huh? to get the bunny. Yeah, yeah. the bunnies oh. need to be hey. saved. No. Hey. What? Hey. What? Hey. Stop. Hey. 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 You're not supposed to touch your guys, friends. Guys, 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 I just called a meeting to hey. order. Hey, why do you get to be in charge? Well, you're Marvel and I'm DC. So you can be Iron Man. He could be a special guest is he from the BC Avengers. Like Iron Man's better. Jesus? Hey, what? before Christ. Yeah. No, D DC is the, DC is the the universe where Batman and Superman live in, oh. and Iron Man and Captain America is in Marvel. So oh. see, your girls, you don't know. Well, that's right? have to yeah, 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 right. Have to. Yeah, that's, that's right. It. Hey. So we. It's okay. Uh, Shh. It's okay. Stop, Stop it! You're being mean. So, it's okay, okay mom. <gasps> Tell mom on you. We're just pretending. Yeah, we're doing. Godzilla's it. gonna get you and eat you all right Monkey now. Monkey man. Up, up and away. <laughs> mm. Stop it. Rick, use Sorry. the battery. Stop it. Kids, we're filming now. Oh. Okay. okay. Sorry. Okay. The son of man must suffer greatly. See, he's going to be rejected by the religious rulers, the high priests, and the teachers of the law. And then, uh, I will be killed. <gasps> no! But, after three days, no! I'll be raised to life again. Yay! Yay! Um, Jesus, hey, uh, listen. Can I, can I talk for a second? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Guys, you just give Jesus a round of applause. He's doing a great job. You know, Jesus. Yeah. Woohoo, Jesus. Great job. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. Let's just. 
Okay, so Jesus, I wanted to tell you, so uh, maybe we could change up what we're talking about, because you're you talking about being betrayed and, you know, killed, and this, it's not really trending right now. It's, it's not really the most popular thing. So I had a great idea. What if you could talk about, uh, oh, those parables? Folks really like those, you know, especially the ones about the sheep. What, what do you think about that? Get away from me, Satan. What? You were looking at things from a, a human point of view. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You need to look at no, things wait. from a God point of view, but, from his point of but view. I, but you see, I was just having, you know, our, our best interest at heart, you know, what's best for us, best for me. I mean, not, not best for me, but, you know, best for, for everybody, you know? Ah, fooey. <laughs> <laughs> you see, guys, if you want to be my follower, you have to put your own ways down, pick up your cross, and follow me. Anyone who tries to save his own life will lose it. But if you lay down your life for my sake, the sake of the good news, then you will save it. Woohoo! Guys. I'm laying down my life. Like, he's gonna lay down. And. It's not what Ow! Really you hit me. That's They're all going to lay down. They're all laying down. That was nice. Pass interference. Personal foul. 15-yard penalty. Repeat. Second down. Traveling. Safe. The runner is safe. So maybe you recognize some of these calls as referee calls from different sports. So I was doing different ones from different sports. Um, so referee's job is to make sure that the game, the sports game, is fair. Make sure that the rules are being followed to the best of their ability. But we also know that this is a really big job. The referee's only human. Usually there's a team of referees trying to do it and try to make sure that they're making the best calls as possible. This is definitely a job that I wouldn't want because it seems like a lot of pressure. So if you think about it, if you watched a sports game, maybe uh, basketball or football or something like that, what are the teams doing when like the referees are trying to make, like they get together and trying to make a, um, a decision on maybe a difficult play? Because a lot of things are happening really fast. The other team members are like trying to convince the referees that their side is right. Like, no, I didn't, I didn't drop the ball. No, I didn't fall down. No, I didn't do all that, do that. And sometimes even the coaches are yelling at the referees. It can be a really hard job, especially when things are going really, really fast and it's hard to see everything that's going on sometimes. We saw in our Bible story today that Jesus made a strong statement at Peter. He said, get away from me, Satan. Some other translations say, get behind me, Satan. Well, just remember, Jesus wasn't calling Peter necessarily that he was the devil. Rather, he was calling out that the devil was trying to use Peter's words to make Jesus do something that he was not supposed to do, to tempt him to take the easy way out. And what did Jesus say? He said, you're seeing things from a human point of view, not God's point of view. This kind of reminds me of what I was talking about with the teams when they're talking to the referees. They're trying to convince the referee um, to see things from their point of view, make it so it benefits them. Well, the referee's job is to make sure it benefits everybody and to see things from a different point of view. Sometimes games will even use cameras so they can see it from a higher point of view or per from a perspective that the other people don't see it from so they can make the best call available. Well, it's the same with God. God sees things from a different point of view. Maybe we see it from one side. Maybe we want things to go our way, especially when we pray. We always want things to go our way. Like, Jesus, can you just like make everything work out so like it works out this specific way? Like make this person say this thing or whatever? Well, God doesn't operate like that. God operates with, um, with his will that is best. Um, so if you imagine like a sports field, maybe you see it from your point of view, but God sees it like, you know, from the, his highest point of view. You can only see it from where your spot is, but God can, could see everything that's going on. He knows exactly how far the ball was thrown, how close the person was to the ground, all those things. Because of that reason, we can trust God's choice. We can trust his will. We can trust his point of view because he sees everything in a greater way than we do. Referees, we know that they blow whistles, they uh, penalize players when they make mistakes, and they like get in trouble immediately. Well, 
God is not like that. God is not blowing his whistle telling us how bad we've done and that we have to um, get all these punishments or whatever. However, God is trying to get our attention so that we can make the right choice, so we can know if we've made a wrong choice. But he's also able to use these things for his glory and use the challenges we face um, to help us grow in our character and help us serve him. So let's continue learning about this today in our lesson. All right, so are you ready to see all of my um, friends here do a challenge today? Yeah. They're a little scared because they don't Let's know do what this. is in my bucket. <laughs> I hope Pastor Sonia has to eat worms. Oh, there are gummy worms. worms. I yeah, know gummy worms, worms are okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's some cards in my bucket, and I'm going to pass it to you first, Isaiah. Oh man, I shouldn't so be last. So pick two. Pick two. Yes. Okay. So the thing is, I am so kind that. Can I get them? Yes. You get to read them and decide which one you want to do. So you get to do one and reject one. Okay. Okay. So, so this tell one us which says, one you reject first. This one says participate in racing the planets, which is four marathons, three in the desert, and one in Antarctica. Oh my okay. well, you lord! Start. Go, I'm not go, doing that. Go. Hey, you did that training, you know, you where you were training a marathon in uh, Antarctica. In the Antarctica? desert in and in Antarctica. That's crazy. I'm pretty That's sure. Extreme. Yeah. Do you I like don't cold? think I was born for that. No. All right, I'll reject that one. He's this one it. is selfie challenge. Take a selfie with your eyes closed, your, though your eyes and mouth must be in the picture. Okay. Mm. So try not to just get. The Should we predict your head. whether he can do this yes. or not? Can you do um, predict? Do you predict yes or no? See. How often do you take oh, selfies? I, I think as is uh, probably going to be pretty good at this. Yeah, he's young. Three times, mm -hmm. times, times a year. Three times a year. I'm going to be great at this. Well, been, all right, okay. so I do I You have to do deck lips. You have to do deck lips. So do I have to? Okay. <laughs> do the Darren Moten face. Wait, I got no more than, okay. <laughs> he's so funny. <laughs> okay, do you think he's got it? Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, he's gonna show the selfie oh. to you. See if you did it. You forget to turn it on! You forget to turn it on! You guys see that? You guys see that? Because his so eyes were funny. closed. He made it. Oh, yes, that's so funny! Oh, right. So we didn't predict. I oh, I thought I he did. would. I thought he would too. I think that oh. he failed that challenge. Yeah, that was an epic yeah, I fail. <laughs> you I turned, might want to work on that. I remember to look at the camera turning on, but I forgot to look at it and see what I was looking at. That's okay. It takes you five minutes to remember how to turn it around every time. serious. Yeah, all right. Pastor Sonny, you're up. Oh, sorry. I'm nervous for you. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So, what are you gonna do? Participate in Vendi Globe, a race where you sail by yourself around the world with no stops. Okay, I so do want to do this, <laughs> but you probably would never see me again. That it's actually super you're dangerous doing what now? by yourself. Sail around alone. the world with no stops, and you're wow. not, it's not like for supplies right, or and anything. it's with oh. sails, wow. so it's not like you're All in a sailing. like a motorboat. No. No. Okay, okay. maybe you'll okay. discover some new land. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, what do you have to do? So I think she's rejecting the yeah. sailing. Yeah, sorry. Not sail. Yeah. Okay. No, not gonna sail. The okay. mannequin challenge: strike a pose and hold it for 15 <laughs> seconds. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna count. You have to. All right, you guys watch. Make sure it doesn't move. Yeah, see if she okay, can... my prediction is she'll be able to do that. <laughs> and not move for 50? Yes. Okay, I, I think oppose. She yes. Yeah. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six. Excuse me, her face. Eight, uh. nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. <laughs> she did it! Good for you! I, I, I move my face. That would be a scary mannequin. Yeah. Oh, that's that. true. I didn't think He's... about moving your face. Yeah. That should have yeah. been the don't laugh challenge. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay, my turn. All right, Miss Patty. Okay, you let's are see the if last I can one. Be a mannequin. That was pretty fun, it looks like. Okay, yeah. so hey, pick two. Go. I got two. Okay. Pick two. I feel like I'm in Panera's. I'll take the soup and a salad. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Okay. Don't. Oh, come on. Ah. Don't blink challenge. Keep your eyes open without blinking for 20 seconds. Ooh. Maybe we should make it 15. What's that's the other one say? Yeah, what's the other cards? one? You got two one, choices. Participate in a race across America, a bike race that goes Ooh. nonstop from California, nonstop from California <laughs> to Maryland. I think you should. Okay, you it. have the bike shirt on? I do. Yeah. I have my Tour de France. That's the perfect shirt one for you. On. Yes! Right? I read that you can't go pee though. I mean, you can't well, go pee. I'm There's sure you no non-stop. No, I think. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. 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 Okay.
sorry. I'm, not, I'm just not going to blink. I'm sorry, so guys. Right. I all know. right, all right. I think we know which one she's going to do. Okay, okay. I okay. I so, think, I don't think I she can do it. Do you think oh, she can? How oh, many wait, seconds? Wait, wait, wait. We have to predict. 20. Can you do that? I don't think she can do it. 20 seconds is a long time. That's a long time. Okay, you have to tell me how much. Okay. Okay, ready? Who will I stare at? Let's just count. Okay. I'll stare at the camera. I'll stare at my friends. Okay, ready? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, ten eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Oh, I can do it! I can do it! I can do it! Oh, it's so hard. It's so hard to like you water. Were, it is so, so hard. You were really close. Oh, I was it is a there. hard That's challenge. So sad. Yeah. No, I'm gonna cry. Oh, it's like oh, my fatty. Yeah, so no, sad. I know my oh. eyes are all watery. That was really hard was to do. Oh. You try that at home. See yeah, wow. you and your family can um, do any of those. Those are hard. Those yeah. are hard. Well, apparently, let's they know. were hard. Yeah, let us know how it goes. <laughs> if, it, if you you know grow up and do one of those hard challenges, let us know. Yeah, <laughs> biking pretty... across America, you'd need your parents' permission. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so those were some hard. Crazy challenges we didn't do, some fun challenges we did do. You have a lot of challenges that you're gonna face in your life. Some of them are physical challenges like these. Some of them are challenges with your feelings or with other yeah. people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that brings us back to our big idea for today. Do you guys remember what our big idea is? Can you say it together? God, um, Jesus, uh, Jesus understands, understands our, our challenges. challenges. Yes, of That's course. Jesus understands our challenges. I totally Jesus had that. Jesus understands my challenges, your challenges. Exactly. So we need to read a scripture to go along with that. So okay. can you have your Bible? Yep. Can you turn to Hebrews chapter 4, okay. verse 15? Okay. Mine was marked. <laughs> Hebrews 4, 15. So Miss Patty, you found it. Can you read that for us? Sure. Okay. For, uh, 15 and 16, actually. Okay, 15 and 16. So it says, when I get there, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize mm. with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is such a great yeah. scripture. It goes yeah. back to, I like it too, it goes back to how we talked last week about Jesus being tempted. Yeah. And so Je it says that Jesus empathizes with our weakness. So empathy is a big word, but our Huge. vocabulary word for today is empathy. Um, <laughs> empathy means like even more than compassion, it's being compassionate and understanding, but so much because you've been there. Yeah. And and you've experienced it yourself. So I want to talk about how Jesus can empathize with us. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 So yeah. God yeah. sent him to this world. Yeah. And part of it was so that he really would understand the human, yeah. what it means to be a person. Yeah. So can you help me think of some good examples of how Jesus understands what we're going through because of something that happened to him? Right. Yes. The first thing that comes to mind is uh, he had a human family. He had siblings. Right. He had right. brothers and sisters. The Bible says. Right. Um, and and think about the oldest. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. He was the oldest boy. I mean, that's a lot of pressure, probably, for younger siblings. Yes. <laughs> like, you know, have an older brother be Jesus. Right. Nobody's ever going to be as good as Jesus. Yeah. Was. But <laughs> you know, he also had a, a father figure on Earth who, mm -hmm. at some point, probably passed away. It seems like because he yeah. wasn't there when he was older. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but the other thing that I really like is that. Um, some of the challenges uh, Jesus went through, not just, um, you know, physically being on the cross, but mm -hmm. just all the different pressure he had from, mm -hmm. like, the Pharisees and how many people just, I mean, there's people who loved, liked him. There's people who just didn't yeah. like him at all. Yes. And, um, you know, he had a lot of followers at one point, but then a lot of them walked away because he's like, nah, he's not, I don't really like it's that. too hard, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Jesus understands what it's like to not be popular. Mm, yeah. Right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's also, I think that Jesus understands what it's like to be like in a group of people, like like kids with their classroom. You know, he had these disciples that he traveled with, he did everything with, mm -hmm. and they couldn't have gotten along all no, the time. We know they did. So, right. Yeah, so there's <laughs> times that they argued and yeah. they fought. But he still was, you know, wanting to be with them and teach them and be a part of their lives. And he loved them. In spite, and I'm sure he taught them how to love each other in spite yeah. of their differences. Mm -hmm. So I just think he knew, you know, and, and like I, Isaiah said, where, you know, he knew what it was like to not be popular. He knew what it was like for people to call him names. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and you know, he knew. Accuse him of things he didn't do. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Yeah. What about you? One of the things that I, I think of is when Jesus was born, you know, his parents had to bring an offering to the temple, right? So they bring the poorest offering. So mm. I'm thinking when he was first born or little, mm. they probably didn't have a whole lot of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he knows what it's like to struggle. Now, maybe Joseph did better with his woodworking. Maybe right. his career took off. But there, I'm sure he knew how to deal with not so much, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that's mm -hmm. hard. Yeah. That's, so Jesus understands that feeling. That's yeah. amazing. Of not having yeah. enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I love, too, how Jesus knows what it was like to be a kid. Yeah. yeah. Like, mm -hmm. he was the son of God. He could, could have come to earth as an adult. But he didn't. He right. came as a baby. He had to grow up and obey his parents. Yeah. Even... When, you know, I'm sure it wasn't always fun for him either. Yeah. But he understands what it's like for you to be a kid. I yeah. think that that's, yeah. that's mm -hmm. fantastic. So we know that Jesus had good friends. He cried yeah. when Lazarus died. Yeah. He right. had all of those same feelings that you and I have. He wasn't a robot or anything. Like he had those feelings. And that's why he can empathize with us, with our challenges and the hard things that we go through. Jesus understands those things. So the rest of our verse in Hebrews 4, um, verse 16, says that when we come to him, he has grace and compassion on us because he mm, does yeah. understand. Yes. Man, it's hard here, and he yeah. knows it's hard here. Yeah. Yes. So we, I, I love that so much that when we pray to Jesus, he knows what we're going through. Yeah. That's so such a comforting thing yeah. to yeah. know, isn't it? Okay, so one last part of this Bible story that I think that we should touch on. Um, earlier, we predicted if we thought each of you could do your challenge, right? Yeah. So I wondered what you thought. Why do you think that... <laughs> we all failed. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't. <laughs> like, what I didn't, did she give you? No, uh, I was uh, just like, we didn't, none of us okay, accomplished that. Yeah. Yeah, they were hard, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think that Jesus went to the trouble of predicting his death? He, we know mm -hmm. he did at least three times, very possibly yeah. more than that than mm -hmm. is recorded in the Bible. But he told the disciples that he was going to die. Why? Why would he do that? I think that it was um, to help them understand and prepare for what was coming. I think, and and in doing it so many times, it was like. You know, look, this is going to happen. No, really, this is going to happen. You know, it's a way to just kind of continually affirm in them that they were strong enough. I'm. This is going to happen to me, but I've given you all you need. Mm -hmm. This is, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, th I think so, because a lot of times God gives prophecies, right? Mm -hmm. He kind of tells you, hey, this is what's coming up. And, you know, he prepares you. He wants you to be ready for it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he's going to give you that, you know, warning, hey, this is coming up. Sometimes he's not. But. You can trust him no matter what, because if mm -hmm. Jesus could see that happening in his own life, he can see what's happening in your life, yeah. and you can take right. comfort in that because yeah. he's got it all yeah. under control. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. comfort was it. Yeah, I think the fact that Jesus knew all the things that he was going to go through, um, all the struggles, all the trials, mm -hmm. all the temptations, mm -hmm. that's something that he went through that we also go through. Mm -hmm. But the fact that Jesus went full steam ahead into it mm -hmm. all the way. That's like true. I mean, yeah. he knew how many bad things, how awful yeah. it was going to be. Yeah. Um, but yet, in spite of that, he knew exactly who he was, why he was here, mm -hmm. and he was willing to go all in and, yeah. and really sacrifice himself. So He's wow. brave. He's he was willing brave. to be obedient. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was saying that exact yes. same thing, how brave mm -hmm. that was. So as you think about what we just talked about, that Jesus empathizes with what you're going through. He knows and he understands. So let's move into a time of prayer where Jesus wants to help you to think about those challenges and how he wants to help you with every single one of them. Okay, so just like Miss Amy said, we're gonna talk about some of the challenges that we face in our lives. And first I wanna talk about school. So I'm gonna put my ping pong ball in school. Maybe some of the challenges that you're feeling right now is doing online schooling. That is really difficult, especially I don't know, for some, certain subjects like math, it might be more challenging. Maybe you're really struggling with that, or maybe you're actually going to school because some students are. Maybe you go to school for two days and then you come home and when you go to school, it's different. And there's all kinds of protocols that you have to adhere to. So maybe school is one of your challenges. I want you to think about that right now. Let's move on to friends. Maybe friendship right now is really challenging for you. I'm gonna put another one in friendship. Maybe you're not able to be with your friends or you're not able to talk with them. You feel kind of lonely. Maybe that's really challenging for you. Or perhaps it's on the flip side. Maybe you're always talking to your friend. Maybe you're getting in fights constantly with them. Maybe there's other things going on. So think about friendship. Is that an area that you're facing challenges right now? 
How about home? Let's put one in there for home. We've been home a lot lately, haven't we? We've been with our parents, we've been with our brothers and sisters, maybe we live with grandma, granddad, maybe we live with our aunts and our uncles, and it can be challenging to be with people all the time. Maybe you need a, a chance to get away and just kind of regroup, and but you can't because people are around you all the time. Maybe you're arguing more. Maybe you're having a hard time getting along with mom or dad or even with your siblings, your cousins. Maybe that's a challenge right now. Think about that. Okay, let's move on to myself. Ooh, huh. let me just tell you, a lot of times we are our worst enemies. The things that we tell ourselves are awful. Sometimes we feel like God could never love us, which we know is not the truth. Or we tell ourselves that we're just not smart enough, not good enough, that we'll never fit in. Honestly, you need to stop and think about that because if you are your worst challenge, then you need Jesus to really help you to give you the mind of Christ to rethink and to look at things the way he does. And let's go to our last one, which is the world. Maybe, I'm gonna put my ping pong in that, maybe the things that are going on around you are really scary, you know? Every time you turn on the TV, they're talking about COVID this, they're talking about this, you know? You're seeing people not get along with one another and treating each other horribly. This is not the way that God wants us to live. And maybe you're worried and you're overwhelmed with what's going on around you. Maybe some of the things I shared today, you're like, Miss mm, Patty, that does not apply to me at all. I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe some of the things I said really hit home and really tugged at your heart and you were like, yes, that's a challenge. I want you to take a moment right now because if I didn't say anything here that didn't challenge you, I wanna give God an opportunity to bring that to you so that when we pray, you can pray through whatever it is that is challenging you. Just take a moment, close your eyes, and think. Holy Spirit, help us to understand what is really challenging us that you want to move in and work through our lives with. Okay, do you have it? Okay. Now, Jesus does not want you to walk through your challenge by yourself. He wants to give you the tools you need to get through it, okay? You are not meant to do things alone. You were meant to do things with God your entire life. So yield to him. Let him speak to you. Let him give you ideas of how to get through what you're walking through. Maybe it's something that you tell mom and dad with. Maybe you, you tell a trusted adult for help because maybe it's a little bigger than you. And God wants you to look for help with those people he's placed into your lives to give you the wisdom to know how to get through that challenge. Either way, he wants to be there with you, walk with you through this, and to help you face that challenge and overcome it. Just like Jesus faced challenges and God was there with him, when you face challenges, God will be there too. Let's pray. Father, these areas that we're lifting up to you right now, we're asking for your help to get through them. I know, Lord, sometimes you help us to get through the challenges very quickly. Sometimes they take a long time to walk through them. But however you answer our prayers, Lord, we know that we can trust in you and that you will lead and that you will direct us and that you will help us to overcome. The challenges will not overwhelm us and they will not overcome us because you will make us overcomers. Help us to walk closer to you, to listen to you, to be obedient so that we can walk just like Jesus and overcome all the things that are thrown at us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, this week, focus on that and trust God. Whenever that challenge comes up, pray about it and then listen to what God wants you to do. You'll overcome. Hey guys, so our memory verse for this entire series is from 1 John chapter 5, verses 5. It says, who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So you already know how we practice our memory verse, and we do it by doing different kind of sports and saying our memory verse one word at a time. So this time, I decided to use a paddle and see how many times I can hit the ball as I say the memory verse. And I decided not to do this by myself because I'm not sure if I'm good at this, so I invited <laughs> Ryan to help me. Hello. So are you ready, Ryan, to do our memory verse? I'm kind of ready. Okay, so I'm not sure how good I am with this, but. Okay. 
Let's try it. I bent my ball a little, so gotta give me a second. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I think it'll I think still it, work. I think it'll work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Set. Wait. So is the first drop gonna be who, or do we have to drop it and then do one more to make it who? We can do it that way. The first drop, or the second one. The second one. Okay. 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 Ready? Set. Go. Who, who is is <laughs> what? Try it again. We can try it again. Let's okay. do it one more time. Ready? Yep. Who is the it? Oh. one? Oh! <laughs> I messed up the memory verse. Okay. Let's the try it one more time. Distracting me. Okay. We go again. Okay. Okay. Who is it that oh, overcomes the world? Oh, Only the one who <laughs> believes that Jesus is the. too if you have a paddleboard as well so make sure you learn your memory verse because this is our last time learning it so we'll see you guys on our new series well this is the final lesson in our challenge accepted and so I hope that through this process you've really seen how God cares about everything that we walk through and he's with us through everything that we walk through Stay tuned next week as we start a brand new series. But before we get there, don't forget, I always want to remind you guys to like, share, and subscribe all of these videos. When you do that, you're sharing Jesus with your friends and family that you um, are connected with. So it's just a great way to do that. And I have one final announcement. I'm going to invite Miss Amy to come here with me. Come on in, Miss Amy. So you guys know Miss Amy. She's been with us now for 11 years. She's been with Children's Ministry. Well, we're kind of, sort of, somewhat, not really. Did you follow that? Kind of, sort of, somewhat, not really saying goodbye to Miss Amy. She's getting ready, actually, to move to Colorado, to Denver, right? To outside of Denver, mm -hmm. in that area. So she's not going to be with us on Sundays in person, but we're going to figure out a way. We're going to figure out a way because she's going to still be helping us with mm -hmm. children's ministry, right? Mm -hmm. We're still going to be talking. She's still going to help prepare our lessons and stuff. And because she's out in the mountains, we're going to figure out a way that we can see mm -hmm. videos mm -hmm. of Denver and we'll have her and Mr. Ross video some stuff and help us teach yeah. because we can do that now with the video capabilities. Yep. So she still loves us and she still wants to be a part of us and we want Miss Amy to be a part of us also. So we're, that's why I say we're kind of sort of somewhat not really saying goodbye to Miss Amy. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say that so that the kids, yeah. you know, there's going to be a couple of weeks. They may not see you in some of these videos because mm -hmm. the move is happening and it's going to be hard to get her into video, but we will see you again. Yes. And Absolutely. she's not going to be gone forever. And even, you know, Hey, if you guys come back into the area for Mr. Ross's travel, will you come back? Absolutely. So she'll come back on a Sunday if you're in the area yeah. and say hi to everybody. So don't forget um, to uh, just say a prayer for Miss Amy and Mr. Ross as they're traveling. In fact, I'm going to do that right now and remember them. But again, you're going to see them again. I know you're going to you're going to come back, right? We love you guys so much, and I'll miss being here on video with you all the time. But yeah, we're glad to still be connected. Have, we've, we tried to find a way that we couldn't lose her forever. <laughs> so this is our way to do that. So um, let's say a quick word of prayer for Mr. Uh, Ross and Miss Amy as they get ready to move. Why don't you guys pray with me? Father, we just thank you for um, the opportunity that we've had to be a part of Mr. Ross's and Miss Amy's life. And I pray right now, God, as they are preparing to travel, God, that you would Go before them. Make the way smooth, Father. Help them to find housing quickly, God. Help their travels to be safe. And God, as they transition in this um, new way, God, I pray that your covering would be over them. Your protection would be over them. And God, that you would give um, us even great insight in to what they're going to be experiencing as we're able to do this virtually. We just thank you and we praise you for the new opportunities that Miss Amy is going to have and how 
Um, and God, I thank you that you've provided a way that she can stay connected with us. So we just pray blessings over this family and ask God that you would just, um, again, just protect them as they go. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so we will see you guys next week in our new series, and you'll see Miss Amy again soon, I know. Bye.